Yeah. You don't like the terminology? Tough. Learn what it actually means, and maybe you will like it, right? Yeah. I only had one response to that, and I answered it well, you know, so, and they were cool with it, so. But you're not going to change something that's been used for 70 years, and, you know, it, it's a good yeah, term. Yeah, that's the thing. There, there are a lot of examples. For example, in, in physics, so a lot of um, these, these signs are actually contraindicated since when when you think about they have thought um the positive charge is is flowing through through the conductor but that's not true actually it's it's when when you look at from the now from the now state point of view it's the negative so actually it would make far more sense to change all the signs but it doesn't happen since it's convention yeah, so, and, and, so you basically always have to to think twice when when doing such a thing like okay technical charge direction and real charge direction. <laughs> it's actually the best word for the for the job, and I can argue that and win the argument. And the reason that punishment's the best word is that even in you know, before B. F. Skinner came up with his definitions, you used punishment to stop behavior. That I mean, it was something used to stop behavior. So using that term immediately evokes the idea of stopping behavior. And at the time when he wrote it, too, it was a time when people actually appreciated that you had to stop certain behaviors. You don't let your child uh, run up and put their hand in the flame of a gas stove. And you aren't going to walk over and say, oh, Johnny, you really shouldn't be doing that and watch their fingers crisp. Right. I mean, come on. So uh, it wasn't looked at the same way at that time. You know, you, and today where the idea that, you know, you know, the, the kid that did the worst in the ball game, they come, oh, Johnny, you're the last winner. I mean, that's such a bunch of BS. It's unbelievable. But. Um, no, yeah. The first runner, no, the, the runner up is the best of the losers. Yeah. The biggest danger with punish, positive punishment is that it is, it is actually uh, uh, positively rewarding to the individual who uses it That's because it, it appears to work so well, but it, it, it only works, you know, there are certain circumstances you use it, but it doesn't encourage that the one who's being trained to want to be trained. When you introduce something that that is uh, not pleasant, I mean, it, punishment is as simple as somebody who gets slightly nipped by their bird and then knows the bird doesn't like to sit on a certain, per a certain perch and puts them over there. That's punishment. What are you trying to do? Reduce or extinguish your behavior, right? You don't want them biting. So um, everyone who tries to reduce certain behaviors is punishing. <laughs> That's the definition, right? You're trying to reduce or extinguish your behavior. So, And it doesn't mean what and now punishment is, is become an evil word. Um, but you know, punishment was done with children, uh, not necessarily, you know, put them in a corner, give them a timeout. That's punishment. They still do that, they don't call it punishment. They say, Well, it's a timeout. Does the child want to be in the timeout? No, well, <laughs> so they still use it, but they're just afraid of the word. Mm -hmm. and you obviously don't want to. I mean, if you one of these birds, like, have you ever tried to, uh, anyone who's ever tried to like hit a cat? To stop Bob, to stop it from doing something, knows what the cat does, crazy human, and doesn't want to have anything to do with you. And as smart as birds are, I mean, they're once you do something like that, they'll, it'll be really hard to get them to trust you again. Like with uh, Laurel, when I uh, tried to get her to stay in her cage that day, I had to leave, and there was a hawk at the window, and so. I mean, it took six months to calm her down after that. So how do we get Lorelei to extinguish her, her shoe chewing behavior? <laughs> well, I don't actually try to stop her there. I just I just play around and if she gets too adamant about her, I pick it up pick her up like I'd have her now on my, my lap. But it's a game we play. I'm not trying to stop her. If she got where she was trying to bite through the shoe, then I would have to start punishing the behavior. Um, but sometimes you can do it without punishment. Sometimes you can just use another tool, something that they're more interested in, like take an old shoe and throw it 
in the aviary and let her have at that shoe as long as you're sure that it doesn't contain stuff like uh, you know, uh, microfibers or something inside it that they could ingest. You know, they just throw an old shoe in there, an old tennis shoe or something. Give them an alternative. DR, have DRA. Her, have her boyfriend come and print her. Yeah, that does it too. <laughs> Yeah, so we all do punishing behaviors. If a bird is screaming, we don't generally, we may not be doing it the right way, but we try to extinguish the behavior. So when you're trying to do that, you are punishing. Uh, it's just that term that wasn't as bad in the year I was born, 1953, as it is today. The mm -hmm. concept back then, if you had a child who was setting fire to houses, you didn't say, Johnny, you shouldn't play with matches. <laughs> you know, you, you Gave them, you know, restriction to their room or, you know, back then they would, it was more common to spank a child. Or something. There are times when that might be necessary, but not with parents. You never want to physically injure them. With a child, you may want to swat them once in a while. If they're going to do something that's going to hurt others or hurt themselves, you may have to. But it's not something you're looking to do. You're better off to find somebody, you know, oh, you like, you like playing with fire. Well, we've got this wonderful game here that has a whole bunch of, You know, it's about firefighters and putting out fires. I mean, that might work. That might also go the other way around. It might make them more interested in, in actual physical fires. But mm -hmm. you try to find an alternative if you can. But with these guys, you want them to make their own choices. And that's where operant conditioning comes in. And operant is a word that means, you know, the actor, the one that does, that is doing the behavior. So if you want, if you're conditioning uh, someone using operant conditioning, you're trying to condition them to do their own behaviors in a way that works in the world for them and for you. So. Let's greet some of our chatters. We have Eliza Wins here. Hello, Eliza. Then we have Calvin Thurston. Hello. And Falkensu is here. Who has released the punishment cotton? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, Lorelai, we play a game where she was biting my shoes and she was getting too much into it. So I picked her up and put her on my lap to stop the behavior. So I punished her. She didn't mm -hmm. really, she, there was no pain in it. I, I What I did is I removed the stimulant that was causing the issue, which is her being close to my shoes. So, so I punished her today. It's funny. She didn't act like it was bothering her at all. Well, she got to sit on your lap and get pins. The best kind of when you have to do positive punishment, the best kind is when the, when the one you do it to doesn't realize it's been done to them. Because you're just adding something to reduce the behavior. So um, today, I'm trying to get Snowball out of here. And he decides, and he, you have to throw a Frisbee. Now, he's got me trained, too. So I have to throw a Frisbee so that he'll get out of his cage because he won't let me pick him up in his cage unless he's on a perch. But he's at the bottom of his cage, he won't. So I, throw, I, I threw a Frisbee, and he came over to it, and then he ran under uh, Pippa's cage. <laughs> so I've got a tool I made that I use with – I'm talking about you over there, Snowball. I have a tool I use – to make it so that I can give KK his medicine because he has been so tortured with syringes. If he sees one, he's out of there. I have it hidden inside of a toy and this kind of thing. But but this is just a stick with a half shell coconut on it. And I know how Snowball is with new items. <laughs> I just put it underneath the cage close to him and I heard this noise from him and they came out from underneath there like This horrible thing came towards me, you know. <laughs> so I definitely punished him to extinguish the behavior of being under the cage so I could get him out here. Now, in that case, he wasn't too pleased. But once he got out of here, he's happy to be outside. Once I picked him up, he was happy. So I would have rather he would. Outside. I tried talking to him, but he, he said, oh, oh, I'm under here. You can't get me out. He was playing. As soon as he saw that stick with the, the half of a coconut shell, he was like, ah. I didn't expect <laughs> that heavy of a reaction, but I got one. Snowball. 
Yeah, he's such a character. He's he's uh, actually every bird that's in here. I can stick my fingers in the cage except Bob. I mean, Bob will come right out. He never tries to bite me outside the cage, but you don't know what he'll do through the bars. He's pretty cage territorial. Mm -hmm. I can pet. I can pet everybody else with him. Once in a while, I will do it, but I realize that I might get bit because he just he's that way. But loves me to death, but he doesn't like anybody poking their fingers in his cage. Mm -hmm. Right, Bob? So Eliza Wins would like to know if you don't scream along with your cockatoos. I can't scream as loud as them. But I do, I do yell back at them sometimes. Yeah, they start, they'll start talking, and they want to know where I am, so I yell at them. Mm. Maybe Snowball will be, he'll be saying, either he'll say uh, hello, or he'll say "little bird," as in little bird. He's not good at pronouncing the L's, but he says "little bird, little bird." And then I yell back at him, you know, "Hello, Snowball, hello, Snowball." Mm -hmm. yeah i yell at them they it, i'm not as loud as they are so yeah they i probably, think that's impossible i don't think the human voice can get well maybe if it's trained it might be able to get that loud but they don't oh, have a voice box look so. rowdy shook is coming over uh -oh. yeah she does doesn't have a mander to torture though oh no yeah. No Mander to torture day. Not until later. I'm not torturing Manda, she says. I just <laughs> give him a lesson. Yeah, he, she's trying to tell him, go away, get out of here. And he has nowhere <laughs> to go. So <laughs> where's he kind of go? I'm not sure what what's actually going on between them but i think the pro there is actually a problem that he is a male and a malacan it's it's somehow like between pippa and bob so manda's just a young teenage boy and she's a sugar's a total grandma mm. Just have to pet you. That's it. Hey, Bob. Those are tight. <laughs> and then there's Lisa Banachi. Hello. Hello. Hello, Lisa. Well, Cecil gets to preen his girlfriend today, Lisa. So that's nice. Mm. Yeah, Cecil is out with Lorelai. And Bob. Yeah, we got <laughs> so seven of them out right now, so. And Bob is a really good boy, hopping over, braining sea slap it while he primes Lorelai. Yeah, Bob's a good boy. When he doesn't have one of his moments, he's a really well-behaved boy who is super nice to the others. He mm. can. So does he not come out in the socialization room at all? Or does he come out only with only by himself. Only by himself, if I have the time. And, mm. you know, it, it's not always possible. I have other things okay. to do. Like yesterday I was making birdie bread. I had to do that. Plus I had to, every other day I make a batch of food for the next two days. You know, it's just the base. And then I have other things to add to it. But I have to make that. So I, I had a lot to do yesterday. But fortunately, it was the right weather. So we got out. So. Yeah. Hopefully Bob's figured out that he needs to behave himself if he wants to come out and stay out. <sighs> he is just, he's a contrary individual. He, is. Mm -hmm. he knows what I want and he just won't give it to me in that socialization room. Out here he does. Mm -hmm. He needs, he needs this kind of environment, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. And today it's going to be it's it's temperatures going to might cross the line today too. So I'm not sure. Let's see what they're saying. Yeah, they're still predicting it's going to be two degrees hotter than I like them to be outside. But that usually hits around four o'clock here, so. So I can have the birds out till 2.30 probably. Then I've got to start the process of getting them out earlier in the morning as the temperatures start to go up. Late at night doesn't work because unfortunately the sun has to go down before it gets cooler. So it's, it's early morning or not at all out here. Yeah. So I'll be getting up an hour earlier and then another hour earlier to try to get them out. And when they have to come out, uh, there may be a point where here I might have to just feed them after I get them out. So I don't know how they'll react to that. They like to have their breakfast when they get up, but I could put the dry food in and then come back and give them the wet food later. That's what it takes the time. The dry food I can have ready the night before, as far as that goes. But because the wet food is edamame, and then there's the birdie biscuit, which I I put a little soy milk on it and I heat it up, and then I cover it with a little peanut butter sauce, and then you know they got their mash and they got their beans. All those things have to be heated, so. And yeah, I did try the fresh vegetable thing. First of all, it's kind of hard to get good vegetables here in the desert. But the other side of it is that you never know if you're going to get listeria or E. coli or something in those vegetables these days. They have to be cooked anyway, so you might as well just cook their food and put it into a mash. Right, sugar? What do you say? You still eat it. Still eat so if I can sort of just point it out that I missed a joke by Eliza Wins. Uh, I think it was back when, when you talked about punishment and she said, uh, or may, do you tell them you aren't mad, just disappointed? <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I think, yeah, that's what parents do today. <laughs> Uh, I not not yeah. not sure if that really is good. <laughs> I read an article in our newspaper lately which says that it's good for children to actually um, face frustration so they learn how to deal with it. So when it was about um, what's going on when the family sits together on on the table for for dinner or for lunch and often there's some some fights or arguments occur like when the children a child doesn't want to eat what what's there and so and that it's actually okay when the child doesn't want to eat what's there but you are not responsible then to to get up and make something else or so so the, the child has to deal with okay i don't like what what's there so <laughs> have to live with it yeah, they can eat what's given to them or they can go to bed hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fast. today in the in the uh, the way they're trying to condition people to live today, they want everybody sitting in front of a television set uh, with TV trays um, and they don't talk to each other anymore. So uh, the, old, the old way of sitting around the table and discussing your day or or getting ready for the day, depending on what you know what meal it is, that's pretty much gone. The idea they want is you to sit in front of that TV and be told what you need to buy and how you should live and everything else. So, right, mm. kid. What a fluffy shake shake bird. You've got a pretty fluffy girl. What you doing, Bob? You know, trying to stay clean it's not easy i'm not sure if i already said it live on chat that lisa banerjee is here and our friend rose bud atkins is here hello you both and hello. lisa was unfortunately bitten by her bird rico oh no we are sorry to hear that so yeah, he bit her and then flew inside his cage yeah there's always a cause for it and uh, such as when I got my bitten on the ear, 
Okay. I went back and I analyzed it and I don't, my memory is not such that I can remember days, or, but I could remember the pattern when I was getting out of the cage before or out of the aviary, I'd get out of here. He would rush up and come over and sit by me at first. And then he'd start coming over and opening his beak. And then he would try to grab my clothing. So when he finally got my ear, I had had plenty of time to stop that behavior. But we don't see it. And then somewhere along the line, um, it can be because of something like that, or it can be because of some change you made in the way you look, or some change you made in the environment, or it can be uh, mating behavior, um, or cutting back how much time you're giving them. There's a whole bunch of different things that can cause it. And if you keep a journal that helps, I I have a, a little journaling capacity in my mind. Although I can't remember yesterday, I, I can journal what the behaviors are. So when I start to see it, and that's the funny thing is I saw the behavior coming from Cecil, but it and it was obvious where it was going, but I just didn't recognize it. I had other things on my mind and I'm I'm thinking that behavior needs to be dealt with and I didn't do it, so I ended up having to deal with a uh, arterial blood flow, spraying blood everywhere, you know, and it was not his fault. Was it big boy? No. Am I bothering you? Yeah. He says, I'm preening my, my girl here. You don't need to pet me. That's your father in law, Cecil. You should show some respect. <laughs> yeah, so there's always a reason for their behavior. Uh, what we learn in implied behavior analysis is that you know, behavior is a function of its consequences. So that's just a way of saying that. You know, if you put that in simple terms, that means that the end justifies the behavior. So with what Cecil was doing, it's pretty obvious that he was trying to keep me in here. And the reason being when I start taking the birds out, if I if I leave the aviary like that and I'm taking birds out, that means he's gonna have to go back to his cage. And it's obvious he doesn't like being in his cage. Who would? Right. So, you know, each bird deals with it in different ways, but he tends to sit there like looking like sugar does or she sugar used to look, you know, or she didn't have any expression. He'll sit there and you talk to him and you, it's hard to get through to him. It's not like being in a cage. So I'm fairly sure as sure as you can be that the behavior of grabbing onto my clothing was uh, was so that uh, I a postman there. Um, yeah, the, the postal workers actually wave at them and stuff here. North small town. Um, so I would have had to come up with a way, which I have now. When I leave, I either take him out first or uh, I make sure that he gets out for the two sessions at the same time. So he can, now I'm talking Chinese here, the two sessions. But He'll get out for both. So he, he gets out the most, the most amount of time I can possibly let him out. Some of the other birds, it's not possible to do. Like with Lorelei, if I put uh, Peppa in here, there are going to be fights. It's just going to work out that way. And um, so I have to, I, I need to keep them separate. And she's not that, that dependent on being out all the time. She's okay with her cage and playing in there a little bit. She'd like to see outside, but right now I can't do that because if I take down the, 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 the shielding I have to keep the sun from coming in, uh, they're going to have to get up about an hour and a half earlier, and then they don't get enough sleep. So We're still on the uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Ooh, we haven't changed. The clocks are different, but I, I'm pretty much letting them live their lives on, on the old daylight time. So. So it really isn't 12.30 for them. It's 11.30. Right?
Hi, Lorelai. You got peanut butter on your face. Is that peanut butter? On your feathers? What is that? No, that's mash. Mash on your <laughs> It's wearing her breakfast. Yeah, and, and when you learn ABA, what you're doing is you're constantly, I mean, you're constantly looking at things and analyzing behavior, but you're not doing it. As, you're not like a machine doing it. It's just in the background. You're looking at, well, there's a behavior. Do I, is that a behavior we want to continue or do we want to change it? You know, and when we want to change it, how are we going to get them to want to change it? Which, if it hadn't been for VF Skinner, I don't know how long it would have been before we figured that out. It's better for the individual who is doing the behaviors to figure out they don't want to do a behavior or they would like to do a certain behavior than it is to, for us to try to force it on. Right, Bob? Bob? I a good did, I, did I bring enough wood in for you today, Bob? I, maybe not. I'm just like, yeah, I know you're going to defend the bucket. I, I know. Should have brought in a little more wood, huh, Bob? He's making tiny toothpicks out of what he's finding, so. I am reminded of a story my, one of my uncles. Uh, he had a, a son named Ricky and this little kid they never told him that he was doing anything wrong and they tried to just positive reward with nothing else and it didn't work and by the time he was three years old he thought his name was Ricky No-No <laughs> if you called him Ricky he wouldn't come but if you said Ricky No-No he'd look right at you because that's all they ever did was tell him no. And, and I don't think he really cared. He thought it was part of his name. So with these guys, when they're doing something you don't want, you just have to find an alternative behavior. That's, that's one thing. Or if it's something that you can, if, if he's playing with a toy, he's probably not going to nip you, that kind of thing. That's another thing. Or, uh, you know, to cycle them through, offering them something that's a reward for at, at intervals there's there's a whole bunch of techniques but and then the methods of, of breaking certain behaviors are uh, similar you have to add an alternative that's that's the one that works best never try to ignore a behavior try that with kids and see what you end up with So think of it this way. Oh, Johnny's playing with matches again. Oh, just ignore him. He'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. He'll, uh -huh. he'll stop when he bends himself to death. You know, and usually that's what happens with these guys while you start screaming loudly is that people will think if they just ignore it, you can't do that by itself. You have to provide and you have to uh, reward another behavior. So you know, if Bob says Babalu, that's one thing, but if Bob is, rah, 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 I don't pay any attention to that. But as soon as he makes another sound, he says, Bob's a good bird, or immediately I run over there and give him a treat. So if he starts to just get rowdy, yeah, just a, a day or two of that, and I can get him, I can get him back to where he doesn't do it anymore. You know, and that's just using the same techniques they do with him from the beginning. It all sounds fairly simple, but it, it, it's an integrated package of dealing with behaviors. So. It's knowing so which one to do at the right time. Mm hmm Yep. Dr. Zellig's course was the best for that. I got the grounding in the in the in behavior from Dr. Friedman, but the Dr. Zellig's courses I took definitely made a big difference. 
is you don't see what you think you know what you're seeing, but you don't. It's like that little video I try to get people to watch. It's t- it's two minutes long, so that's about a minute and thirty seconds longer than the average American can handle. But it's it's called Who Done It, and it's just a little video where you're trying to figure out who committed a murder, and you have you know it's two minutes. And only about only about a minute of that video is is you really need to watch to figure it out. But by the end, you realize that you're not seeing the universe as it actually is, and that you're making judgments that you shouldn't judge. So, a lot of people would say Bob is just he's just uh, unruly. Well, actually, he needs a certain environment to be calm, don't you? Oh, you're a good yeah. boy, Bob. He is a good Bob's boy. A good boy. <laughs> There's something he does that a lot of people could uh, mistake, too. I don't know if the camera caught it, but he reached up right the skin right around my watch, and he just grabbed it lightly and let go. That's that's kind of a like a kiss from him. Mm, that was mm-hmm. cute. Yeah, he does that. <laughs> he does that kind of thing, but it could be easily mis- mistaken. And you got to watch that kind of thing too, because if a bird starts doing something like that, it can get it can be harder and harder and harder until eventually it breaks the skin. So you need to get away from that ear. That's the ear that you damaged. So you need to get down here. It's not healed yet. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was punishment, by the way, folks. So I took him away. Negative punishment. I took him away from something. I removed his body from a certain location. They put him somewhere else to reduce or extinguish the behavior of whacking me on the side of the head with that because it hasn't healed yet. So when you have a bird that's doing something, good example is um, Snowball. He uh, he was he was at a foster home. Hi, sweetheart. He was at a foster home. And there was a kid there. Now, nothing like teenagers, but I, you really shouldn't have parrots around teenagers. Now there are some teenagers that probably wouldn't be a problem, but when they're bad, they're bad. And so what this guy did, all parrots will, almost all anyway, if they see a blemish on your skin, they're going to try to take it off. Because in the wild, they 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 part of the preening process. Are you going to grab my hand, or what are you doing? I don't know what that means. You want to come down? No. Who wants to okay. hold hand? Jasper. I don't know what she's doing, and neither does she. You know how she gets sometimes. <laughs> um, yep. So the woman that had Snowball at the time was allowing him to encourage Snowball to try to take uh, spots off her skin. So she only had him for around a month or two. And when he came back to me, he was trying to bite my, my skin all the time. I actually got the answer out of her. I'm, you can't usually trust that people say two reasons. One, they don't know anyway, because we make up our own universe. We, If you study any psychology, you'll realize we have a created universe in our mind that mirrors some of what's in the actual world around us. It, it doesn't see everything, and it cuts a lot out. And the other side of it is, um we're not observant we don't even try to see so so anyway she did she did see him doing this and didn't try to stop it she's one of those moms that says um just let them do what they do and it'll be okay now it took nearly six months to stop him from trying to uh, to do that because he had been so intensely trained to uh to look at freckles on your skin and try to remove them I have a field day if he ever meets me. <laughs> I've got a lot of freckles. Well, he won't do it. You can if you tell him if you just if you redirect him, take you know, take your finger in front of his beak like that. Bob, calm down. There's no people you can see, so calm down. Are you sure you can him. really not see any people? Yeah. Maybe there's some far, far away on the mountain. Well, I mean, on the screen, because you know how he is about people on oh, the screen. Oh, on the screen, like, oh. yeah, that's, that's mm. true. That's the phone people. No, he's trying the to get more attention. The phone people, oh my gosh, Bob, they are back. 
<laughs> the scary, scary phone aunties. He's down here, but when I turn away, he grabs my shirt and yanks on it. Yeah, Bob. And I can stop him by just calling his name. Bob, now that's not going to work. Come here. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on. He gets a little harder and harder, so you have to break him of doing that strike at you, even though at first it's just, just to get your attention, then he gets a lot of control. You're not going back there. No. You're not going back there. Negative punishment. Taking away the thing he wants, which is to be over there playing with the wood behind me. So. Mm. Oh, it's a boy. A little positive reinforcement here is behaving well. So he's getting the positive reinforcement. Petting. He loves to be petted. We do love Thank our Bob. Yes, we do. He's a good boy. Oh, he is. You get somebody in here with Bob, just Bob, who is one of those people who says that, oh, you just, if, if you just, you know, life will be great if you just let it go along the way it is. And within, Within, I'll give it a, I'll go a little longer than I would say. Within 10 minutes, they will be out of the aviary because they will not be able to stand here. <laughs> he, he needs direction. He's okay with it. Yeah, Bob. Bob, he's okay with direction. In here, anyway. In this environment. But I have to block him. Oh, Jesse Flappies. Mm. All the way in Pahrump, I heard somebody drove by. Truck, truck and heard the birds singing waves. Um, only in the small town, I see them. I'm sure in most small towns it's like that. You are a loud little girl. You know that? Yes, and your singing voice needs a little bit of training. Bob, now you're back over here. No, no, no. You're not back over here. No, we're not doing it. You know? Laura Lai. It was a truck. It was a guy in a truck, and he waved. Is that all it takes to get you going? Oh, no, he winged. <laughs> How cute is that? I think, to a certain degree, they all want to make friends with people, especially. I think, yeah, Bob is interested in others, Others are usually afraid of Bob. Yeah, sugar is not the kind of bird who really is like, hey, here's sugar. I want to be friend. She's rather stay uh, stay out. Yeah, sugar. Uh, and then Pip Pippa wants to make a good impression, but you know, doesn't usually require surgery. Um, <laughs> and and I tell people that, and they see me stick my finger in the cage, and like, I'm doing this, but if you do this, you're going to have to find our uh, back bathroom. And I kind of nod my head. That's where you're going to have to go because that's where all the medical stuff is. Hey, that's my shoe, you big monster. Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's Bobaloo. That's the one that just bit the, my heel on my shoe. Yeah, I know. I know who Bobaloo is. We know the Bobaloo. Mm-hmm. And we love him. What was stop it? That's my shoe, you monster. Made a good dent in it, you little toad. That's why I don't buy shoes that have the, the air cushioning in it because they won't have air in them for too long. No. They have to have gel cushioning in it. 
because the gel isn't coming out. Uh huh. I can see you're you're getting into your little mood there. I know I should have brought out more wood for you, but can't do much about that right now. This guy has some wood. He's okay. Considering this is the rowdy crowd, they're pretty calm right now. Well, vocal maybe. Bob, we're not going to start pulling my shirt, are we? Okay. This was this was a uh, about a ten inch piece of. A pine tree with the bark on the outside. And you can see how much is left of it. Not much. Mm -hmm. uh, each one of these birds has different expectations and wants. So if I don't cater to them properly, then I'm going to get behavior I don't want. That's just having someone pierce my ear. Mm. Wasn't paying attention, was I, Cecil? Mm. Cecil the bird? Okay. I'm watching the temperature there, Cecil. You, you can handle it for about another two degrees. Then he'll start panting. It doesn't cool them down, but they pant anyway. You know, Bob, right there. you can't sit up there because if you bump that ear, it's not going to feel good. It hasn't healed yet. Yeah, he managed to get it right where it attaches to the head, right at the artery where the main blood flow is. So, mm -hmm. okay, so it hasn't healed yet. It's still irritating. It still hurts. Silly bird. But you can come up and hit me if you want. Come here. Mm. You want to get it on the other side? Go ahead. Bring my head back to let him know I don't going to the other side. Are you determined? Is that why you're climbing on the AVR? Or are you going to try to bother other birds? Hmm? I think he's determined to get on this side of me. Nope. What I get for thinking. What are you doing with that piece of wood, Bob? I was hoping they'd be wrong about the temperature, but I think today we're probably only going to get another. Hey, that's my foot, you little toad. Get another um, hour, hour and a half out here. What are you doing? Lorelei. 
Those are my shoes. No. <laughs> Somebody is laughing. I think mm -hmm. it's funny. It's a game, so. I'm much louder with my nose when I'm actually. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. It sounds like Jimmy Durante comment. Um, or call Carl Malden comment. I'm much louder when I actually mean it. Hey, hey, hey. Pretend the license isn't there. Yeah, I know. That's your trick. Stand there like, oh, I've forgotten all about your shoes. I know. Mm, he has such a cute face. Come on, Don. Tell a joke so Bobaloo has something to laugh about. <laughs> Bob, you want to hear a joke? Just, no, all of your jokes are a little bit off color. I think Bob enjoys the Sheldon for your dick. I know, Fima. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Bob, what do you call uh, a brunette who dyes their hair blonde, huh? Bob, what do you call a brunette who dyes their hair blonde? Bob. Hmm? That's brainwashing. What do you call it when you when a when a blonde dyes dyes their hair brunette? Hmm? Artificial intelligence. Now I'm not telling the joke. I'm not telling you a joke the way he likes it. So. He says, "Hey, I have a yellow crest. You shouldn't make blonde jokes." True. Someone back. I don't know. I don't have. Like I, he just, I like to say, he, he you, gave the camera yeah. a super cute look. So he that's that's like oh I'm super cute Bob attack. <laughs> 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 and some somebody's running above you. That Cecil with a toy. Mm. Uh oh, attack Cecil. Mm. Be careful, Cecil, Bob. Will not put up with your behavior. Yeah, someone many moons ago was saying that uh, that they uh, you know never had a Triton and, and would like to you know <laughs> get one. I just started laughing. I said <laughs> maybe you should start with something a little easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like do you like when a tornado hits your house every day? <laughs> <laughs> no, Tritons definitely have too much energy for being kept in a house. I mean, you never know about some of these birds. I mean, obviously, uh, Cecil is an umbrella cockatoo, but he's pretty energetic. Hey! Oh, and don't say the others are not energetic, but with the Tritons, there comes a certain spiciness only the yellow crest owners have. You think certain, this guy has certain this unhinged has, crest. Yeah. Uh, sometimes Cecil shows that too, but it, it, Tritons are definitely different there. It's like... Um, Hey! Hey! Yeah! Be nice. And we have a question by Lisa. Um, Don, are you receive? Can can you listen, or is Cecil touching you? Yeah, uh, somebody's think. crying. Ah! 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 Come here. And just like that, things have devolved into chaos. Mm-hmm.
that one quickly. And look at that well-behaved Bob. <laughs> Bob's the goodest boy today. Mm -hmm. That's where you can use uh, negative punishment, taking her away from what she wants to be doing, move her to a different place and give her positive reinforcement. And then she's so quiet. It doesn't work with Bob. I mean, he likes it, but if, if he's yelling over there and I put him on my lap, he'll just keep yelling. It's not going to stop him, but with her, it does. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Then has everybody stopped yelling? So far. Okay, then I read the question by Lisa. Don, as you know, Rico was what's called, is there a difference of behavior of a hand feed parrot as us having them as pets? Well, part of that depends on how they were handled, you know, if they were caught in the wild. Um, if they're caught in the wild using the technique that is the most frequent these days, I mean, there's a whole bunch of horrible techniques. I made the mistake of asking Chat GPT about methods and I was horrified but one of the techniques is to cut down the, the tree so you can get to the nest and then you know you take the babies from the nest that's pretty much going to be like a hand raised bird because they're babies and they haven't had a chance to grow up on a flock so it's hard to say now if if that's the case if they were stolen when they were young from the wild then they're going to act like a, a hand raised bird um in that they're not going to understand what they are. They're going to have a problem uh, dealing with the world in a functional way. So they'll be functionally autistic. If they were taken when they were fully, you know, when, they were, when they were adults, not when they're young, but when they're adults, then they're gonna have wild bird behaviors um, and they will, they learn, they're learning machines. So they'll learn ways to deal with the world, but they, they tend to not be as um, cuddly um depending on the species some species are not cuddly at all anyway but um wild birds will act more like which birds you see in videos of birds in the wild um ones that are raised, raised in captivity will be begging for some kind of attention or begging for food or acting differently because they they don't know what else to do they, that's when they were raised so Complicated question, but you know, in short, yes, there's a difference between between uh, a wild bird that's an adult that's captured and brought into captivity, and uh, and a hand raised or a bird that was taken when it was extremely young in the wild. I think sugar must have been taken in the middle period because she's very mixed up. Yeah, um, she exhibits some behaviors you see from a wild bird she doesn't like to climb on any human she's not fond of that unless she's not feeling well she won't do it but she wants attention I better pet my beak you know, preen my head she wants that again she only wants you to preen her head so um which is what you only should be preening anyway because she can reach everywhere else Yeah, I, you're right. Just about in between. Might have been a young adult after in the wild. Yeah, whatever you do, don't ask about how they're trapped in or captured in the wild on chat GPT because the answers, I checked them, they're all true and none of them are pleasant. So, and the way they're raised in captivity isn't pleasant either. Um, I've often thought that it would be good to take a couple of these people who breed birds like that and do the same thing to their children and keep them in cages and see how it all works out. You know, they're not going to work out terribly well for their kids. Right, Snowball? Mm -hmm. Good Snowball. Yes, Lorelai, it was another vehicle. They actually go by here once in a while. Hmm? So much entertainment. Which is funny. You don't see vehicles go by here. Stop it. Okay, come here. No, no. Come here. Come here. Bob. 
Come here. I'm, don't give me that. I'm not hurting you. Get over here. No. Bob. No. Come here. No. Get down there then. He's harassing me when he gets up there now. It's just play for him, but. Yeah, uh, we had a few cars, and, and I. This this area is described as in town, by the way. <laughs> so, you get an idea of what the town is like. This is living in town. These bowl? No. I'm trying to keep you in line, kid. There's that look. What are you doing? Why are you moving your foot? Lorelei. Oh, Lorelei. <laughs> Sweet. Bob? <laughs> okay, good boy. That's a good boy. Reward for getting on my lap instead of being on the side of the chair trying to pull my shirt. But sooner or later, my skin will be inside that shirt when he pulls it, right? Yeah. Cecil, you got about one more degree and we're going to take you in. The rest of them might be able to go along there. Warning up a lot faster than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, biting behavior is uh, nine times out of 10, it's human centric. It's something we've done since the environment, changed something about ourselves, changed the way that we have approached them, changed the number of hours they're getting, um, rearranged some part of their life. Once in a while, it's a health issue. It's not common, but it does happen. I can only remember in my experience it happening to one bird. It was a citron that was um, that started getting uh, showing signs of aggression, and really it was it was dying, and that was what was going on. So, but it doesn't sound like that's what we have in this case. I mean, this bird didn't want to come out of its cage at that time. There are other symptoms. You can see those kind of symptoms. There'll be something wrong with the poop or their weight will drop or, you know, that kind of thing. You'll, you'll see that before you usually see the behavior. Uh, this person who had the bird was not into weighing daily, and uh, I don't think she was paying that much attention to, to droppings either, so she didn't see it coming. I see you coming most of the time. Once in a while, you sneak up on me. It's good to see a Bob outside. So it doesn't hurt to check the poop and uh, <clears throat> make sure their weight is not is relatively stable. It stays stays within about a five percent margin of the baseline. Usually, it's something we've well, almost always, it's something we've done. If I just ignore Bob getting to the side of me, I'm eventually going to get bit on the side, and that will be my my doing. Yeah, there he goes with the sleeve. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Step up. Good boy. Now, this may be him trying to get me to, to bring him over here and pet him, and maybe establishing a pattern of where he'll come over and Try to grab my clothing so that I'll pick him up and pet him. That that could be a reward for him. He certainly seems happy with me taking him out of there. As long as I bring him over and pet him. So that may be what he wants. <laughs> That's a sneaky strategy. 
Yeah, they're pretty smart. Well, there was a study that Skinner did with a bunch of chickens. And what he did is he had a lever. And what he at first he had the birds, when you press the lever, if you press the lever outside of a ten, you had to wait 10 minutes. But if you press the lever after 10 minutes, it would provide a little bit of scratch food for the chickens. And so the chicken learned to do that. And then what he did is he went on an intermediate schedule. He made it so that Sometimes it would produce food, sometimes it wouldn't, and it, there was no time frame. So it might produce food twice in one minute. It might produce food once in 20 minutes. And he ended up with birds that would go in circles, jump up and down, do all kinds of strange behaviors because they had come to, you know, in their own minds, uh, they saw those behaviors as creating the food. Oh, um. Ruth Spot Atkins would like to know who is outside. Um, let's give a quick overview. It's Bob the Triton and Sugar and Jasmine the Molokan aunties. And then I guess it's Cecil, Lorelei, Snowball, and probably Lucy. And Snowball. If I don't I didn't hear you say Snowball, but and snowball, yeah. yeah. Oh, snow, snow bird. And then Lisa Banner, she faced a problem with donating. She says, Don, yesterday on your YouTube post, I couldn't donate. I touched the donation, but it opens to nothing but all white page. Hmm. Uh, I'm at the moment. I'm I'm not sure which donation button was it on. YouTube. Ah, uh, YouTube. probably the, the donation button under the videos. All right. Um, I'll check into it. Uh, Bob, stop that. I'm not sure of that. You know, yeah, Don, Don will have a look at it. Thanks, Lisa, for your support. Mm. Yeah, their they're coding is so bad at Google that. Bob? Yeah. Well, they're in general. If you go to the website, quarrysanctuary.org, that you'll always be able to donate through that. Yep. Yeah, the company that takes our donations there is secure, and it has uh, it's the one too that our website is done through. So, I I do mo well. I need to get out there again. I do most of the work on it, but I can just tell them and give them a list of what I want done and and text, and they can do it for me. I just prefer it myself. I guess I'm going to have to start handing it off because I don't have time for it. Bob, are you having fun down there? You're digging out the trash. I blew all that away most of it away yesterday and you found that one little cache of trash they're going to think you're a trashy bird <laughs> oh i guess it's time to go oh looking at my my watch here so um thanks everybody for coming yeah thanks lucy, so, you want to say well, pretty bird lucy pretty bird mm. what's that look for she, yeah, she has a crest funny. <laughs> <laughs> she always knows when it's time to end the stream. Funny crest dance. Yep. I think it's pretty bird o'clock. Yep. Well, it is getting warm out here. It's not it's not past the dividing line. It's 84, 85 is when we have to stop. But uh, he does have her beak open. That's kind of unusual. Nobody else is doing that, though. Everyone else looks okay. It's nice Even. to have the rowdy crowd outside. <laughs> you are yeah, you're funny, lovely rowdies. We could get a wind. We could stay out here. I'm crossing my fingers. Usually we do. But hey, thanks mm -hmm. everybody for coming. And yeah, you can always donate on our website. And then there's, of course, Patreon too. Just patreon.com slash Chloe Sanctuary. Although on our website, you can also make monthly donations. You can do that there too. So help to keep us in toys and food and everything else, huh? It's always a fight. Thanks, Amy and Eleanor for your moderation. And 